Recording. Hare Krishna, welcome everyone, all three of you. Hare Krishna, welcome to this reading of some Kapika Moody. No doubt some more coming in. Here comes Mother Chandravati. So while people are coming, let's offer some prayers to Srila Prabhupada. Namo Om Vishnu Badaya, Krishna Bhushtaya Bhutale, Shemati Bhakti Vedanta Swanti Namani, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Gauravani Pachalini, Nirvasisha Shunyavari Pashtatata Satanini, Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita, Kanada, excuse me, she was going, Gauda Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay, we have Mother Gaya's there coming in. Mother Radha Shyam Sundara, Hare Krishna, Mother Radha Shyam Sundari, excuse me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna out there, everyone. So, Hare Bolo. So we're continuing with, and again, I mentioned it last time, but we're making nice headway through the Sankapa Kamudi. We never thought we would get this far, but we have. It's wonderful. We're on chapter 28, which is entitled Bhajan of the Holy Name. Now we've been hearing some about the underlying fundamental principles of smaranam, hearing. So we're going to finish that in this page we're going to read then Maharaj is going to be speaking about some of the details the principles that underline smaranam so that's the goal of krishna consciousness is smaranam of krishna so it's quite an art Maharaj is really explaining it very nicely how to enter into this stage of smaran so it's page 545 and I'll ask Anupama to read. No hands there, so call on Anupama. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. I can read. Yes, so, five, four, five. Yeah, on the top, yeah. Prabhu. Yes, yeah, starting being being individuals. So we'll just jump straight uh, okay. into it. We could spend some time okay. giving more context, but that will take time. So let's just okay. jump into the deep end. Okay. No. okay. Being individuals, serious devotees will have their own nuanced approach to sadhana. Some will try to systematically cultivate Vraj Bhakti. Others will prefer to meditate exclusively on the Mahamantra. And still others may have a unique attraction to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These practitioners may be regulated or spontaneous. But one characteristic common to them all is that they are good sadhakas. They constantly keep themselves absorbed in chanting, hearing and remembering. They are not dawdlers. I've never okay. heard that one before. <laughs> Quick, no, everyone, yeah, not dawdlers. Not dawdlers. So dawdlers. types of devotees have different specific sadness they may be attracted to or may be practicing. Yeah, and Marj mentioned them here. Some are happy just to meditate upon the Maha Mantra. Some will cultivate a remembrance of Krishna in a systematic way. Some will be attached to an unique attraction to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. just saying the same thing. They'll have something in common that they are very serious and sincere about their practice. Yeah. Carry on. And any questions or comments again, please. You're quite welcome to shout out, raise your hand, bang on the table, whatever. Hare Krishna. We shall now speak about the attraction of the regulated devotee for Viraj Bhakti. While the Raghunita Bhakta spontaneously follows his role model based on his study of scripture, the Vedi Bhakta will dutifully revere their ideal. He certainly cannot be indifferent to it. He, his, his reverence for a role model comes from spiritual realization, which comes from studying the tru truths of devotional service as a requirement to go back to Godhead, the goal of Vrindavan. In this regard, Krishna says, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Through hearing from advanced devotees, a Vedi Bhakta eventually aspires to a Vraj Bhakti, even though he lacks a spontaneous attraction for it. 
yet entering Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes is his researched goal. A minority of regulated devotees may have an inclination from some other form of Lord. And so their sadhana and their mood of devotion will correspond to that attainment. We have spoken about this previously. To conclude on these principles of Smarana Das, we may reiterate that the sadhaka's aspiration and his mood of bhakti is the devotional outpouring of a conditioned soul. Guidance from the spiritual master during Smarana and the liberating effect Ed Pav will either fine tune or correct imperfections in those sentiments. Devotional service to Krishna is an unlimited ocean. In this section, we have attempted to present some of the fundamental principles underlying the stage of remembrance. In the following section, we shall say something about the principles underlying the cultivation of remembrance. Okay, okay. let's just pause there because this is ends of the civic section. If there's any uh, clarifications needed or any questions. Again, there's a lot here. Uh, Maraj, again, through his study, is kind of is quite um, condensed what's being described here. Um, but perhaps I just want to highlight this um, second from last paragraph, which begins to conclude on these principles of smarandas. So Maraj often mentions this that we are conditioned souls. But still, as conditioned souls, by the by the potency, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, we experience, we can, I'm sure you all have to one degree or another, experience some quite profound things or some quite profound experiences in chanting the holy name, in taking part in Kirtan or just taking part in the Sankirtan movement. Very, um, we may experience things or emotions which are very inspiring spiritually but because we're conditioned souls um it will be a shadow of the real thing which comes at bhava yeah so that's why marge mentions that um we may feel specifically inspired even at our stage being a conditioned souls we may find ourselves being attracted to the service of the gopis or about Salya Bhav or Gopas like that. Now, and Marge says here, through guidance, then during Smaran and the, at the liberating effect of Bhava, when actually one attains the highest, attains the stage of Bhava, one will either fine tune or correct in imperfections to those sentiments. Do you follow that? Because we're conditioned souls, sometimes our conclusions and our attraction may be more sentiment than it is factual. But it's good because it helps us to be absorbed. But at the stage of Pava, everything becomes either finely tuned more or realigned. Okay. Marge yeah, often makes that point. Uh, just... Can I ask something quick? Yes, please. Why it's always like flickering? It's like, if I can say this expression, it's like the donkey and the carrot. So you feel it, you experience it, but then it's going away. So it's keep going and coming and going and coming. Is that... Krishna trying to train you so you can well, settle well, on the path. Yes, but that's more Krishna who has given us inspiration. He's, he's given us inspiration. So I just mentioned this, so just listen to a class Maharaj was giving on Sunday. He mentioned that all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, as if what um, what you can make out, you can sit there like you can sit down like you do every day in the same place and you start chanting japa. And then all of a sudden you get a tremendous insight 
you may get tremendous taste and it might even bring tears to your eyes, you know. And that's Krishna who is in who who is who is encouraging us as as conditioned souls. Yeah, because conditioned souls mean that we've not experienced that all of the time. That that bhava or that feeling or or emotion is the life of a bhava bhakta and uh, beyond. Yeah, so we may get glimpses into it, but that glimpse is a shadow. Yeah, how long it takes to get actually the real bhava? <laughs> That's to experience it. To experience it constantly, not just a flickering. Like it, it yeah. makes you work harder and harder, and it makes you realize that you need to devote yourself constantly. Yeah, twenty-four hours, three hundred sixty-five days. It, you can't be even a moment outside of it, because then it will break everything apart. Yeah, well, that may be a desire. So, like, how long does it take? Well, that will be different according to our all our unique individual practice and how we're practicing. And there's many, many factors. There's many factors as there are the amount of sadhakas, you know. So there's no mechanical number of years or time that you can say, yeah, by the time you start, mentioned this before, if you start chanting Hare Krishna, then in 16 years, five months yeah. and four days, and yeah. exactly, on, exactly on your... Ten hundred thousand japa period, you're going to achieve tree bhava. It okay, doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It's all Krishna's sweet mercy. It's all Krishna's sweet will. Again, because as is going to be mentioned or has been mentioned, because at the stage of bhava, you're actually beginning to attract Krishna Himself. So that's not such a cheap thing. I just changed off this for me. Mm -hmm. So then, actually, you actually, when you realize that you are self satisfied, you don't need to have a here. Try again. So then, then, actually, when you will realize Bhav, then you will be self satisfied and you don't need anything anymore, isn't it? It's well, like even, yes. if it is a, even if it is a particle, a drop of it, doesn't matter. You don't need to reach the higher stage because everyone is different, but everyone will experience the Bhav in one point. So we will be self-satisfied in that. Yeah, but the Krishna consciousness um, self-satisfaction is not like the self-satisfaction of a yogi. That's the eternal quest we will always be on, is that we will always want more and it will never be enough. That's the same, that's the experience of Radharani. <laughs> to speak of us, it's like you co constantly you want to eat. Yeah, you eat, you eat, and you are never. That's the nature bhakti. of uh, rasa. That's the nature of the taste for bhakti. Mm -hmm. Is that you will feel satisfied to the extent that you will be self-satisfied, and you will need nothing of the material world. Yes, yes, that's but what you I mean, will always you. be on the quest of wanting to experience more of Krishna. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that. And then, that, and then that, that, so that is a, that will be an eternal factor. And sorry, I say again, but because we are so small and we want so more all the time, it's kind of it makes you upset sometimes because you realize. <laughs> so One second, I have to do some muting. Hare Krishna. Go on. Yeah. It's like sometimes it makes you upset because you realize how small you are. And actually you want, it's like a cup and your cup is so small and you want to pour more inside, but you cannot pour more inside, but you keep running and doing it. And you realize yeah. the more service you do, the more you will experience Krishna and the bliss. But then you realize you're too small. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's needed for the cultivation of bhava and prema, is the cultivation of, hu of humility. So we will all be experiencing that in the spiritual life where we have an existential crisis where we realize how small we are. But that's favorable for the development of bhakti. So like with that realization of how small we are and what we want to achieve, then, then we invest that emotion into our japa. And we develop that feeling of ripper lumber, that, that humility-soaked rip. Ripper lumber. So you take that emotion 
and you invest it in your spiritual development. So to feel small is good. And to smell and to feel we have no hope is good as long as it's spiritually qualified. Because it, in other words, there's from the perspective of someone who's struggling with the regulative principles, then if they conclude they got no hope, then they may go back and they will probably fall away and, you know, fall away from devotional service. But the one who's more advanced, yeah. their no hope is not the no hope I'm too attracted to the material energy. It's the no hope. How can I possibly get, get the Krishna's grace? How can I possibly get Krishna's mercy? And that's, that's a mature platform to come to. So that no it's like hope. A child. It's like a child. You are a little child and you see the tree full with mangoes and you want to get the mango, but you cannot get the mango. And you yes. realize that you need the help to get the mango. Yeah, so so that's that's called good. That's called good. So that so again, you, you you invest that mood, you like take that mood and you invest it in the mood of your japa or in the mood, and even when you're doing devotional service, you are you are internally crying for grace. Guess. All right. Any other questions or comments on that? Nice points coming up here. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone's model mongo with his questions has left everyone speechless. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. the thing is that the Mulim has uh, yes. the idea of crying. We cry, we cry even though yeah. Uh, yeah. even though it's uh, uh, it doesn't come out, but we just trying to do our very best. But somehow, rather, Krishna always being his devotee, he must feel sorry for us, or you know that we are hankering for him. He hopefully one day he will help us in our path to get back. Yeah, yeah, of course, and that's uh, and that Krishna is managing our spiritual life. Don't have any doubts in that. He is. He does Krishna help is, us. Yeah, Krishna is, is um, managing our progress. So when you, yeah, in one in one sense, I don't want to scare devotees, but in one sense, we're feeling uh, as Madhu Mango and Mavasa Niti Priya is expressing very very nicely. We're feeling this uh, or this this longing for Krishna. But when it gets to the point where you literally feel you can't live anymore that's when krishna comes mm. <laughs> but but I we cannot imitate that us. but but we cannot we should not imitate that but we are developing that sense this is called what's the sanskrit for this called anyone else can say what's the sanskrit called for this longing greed greed yeah but i thought you said sanskrit Lulia. yeah what's Lulia. the sanskrit Lulia. 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 So, so Krishna is helping us to develop this needed lolyam. It doesn't come cheap. Desperation. Yeah. <laughs> it desperation. is a desperation. desperation. It's a feeling that you get inside this kind of a very strange feeling. It is a strange feeling. Well, it should be, yeah. It's strange according to our material experience. But really, Prabhu, I remember uh, Bhakti Churu Maharaj used to say that once we are in a boat, you know, in the ship, and uh, Prabhupada has got the wheel, whatever, I don't, you know, he's yeah. in you just sit there and just do your sadhana, and we're eventually going to get there to the other side. Yeah, but yes, that's correct. But the type of sadhana that we need mm. to sit there with is being described here in, in a, in a Sankhava Kamudi. Okay. And it's pretty intense. Yeah, pretty intense. It's not just like sitting around. In one yeah, sense, no, no. I mean, it's perfectly yeah, I right. But I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just, just emphasizing that the quality of your sadhana is, is is what is in what is being described in Prabhupada's books through a deep study. Yeah, to not, get I said it is not. Um, what he said, use the word. It's not. Um, what word is? Um, let's find it. Um, all the reading, all Srila Prabhupada books, they're like treasure box. It's like you have a treasure box and you keep discovering new jewels inside. 
Yeah, um, Marge said to you, yeah, they are not daudalous. So uh, we're not daudalous. You have to be. All right, let's, let, let's read a little bit more, okay? And then we can open up for more discussion. So uh, perhaps you can, let's can let, I carry on? Yeah, go ahead. I don't, did someone say, can I read? Who is that? Sorry, shall I carry on, Prabhu? Or shall yes, go on. Carry okay, on, so I can't see any hands up, so you just carry on. Okay, so I'll start from pure devotional service, yeah? yeah. So on. Yeah, okay. Good. Pure devotional service in practice is defined as the cultivation by the word anusilam and as practiced by the phrase kirti sadhya bhavat. Samsara dasa is pure devotion in practice Smaran and das. so it demands God. Mm. Oh, sorry. Smarandas is pure devotion in practice and so it demands quality cultivation for success. There are two ways in which cultivation remembers takes place, either by attentively hearing Nam Sankit or by attentively hearing the holy names while making a uh, natural effort at further cultivation that does not interfere with the hearing process. It is an individual choice that each practitioner makes for himself, although Srila Prabhupada and Acharya makes their choice evident. It should be clear by now that both processes necessitate that a devotee discard all offenses to the holy name. And that means the sadhaka must pronounce the syllables of the maha mantra distinctly, distinctly. Real cultivation in smarana begins when chanting in pure, sorry, chanting is pure. With such quality, kirtan, the mind will be sufficiently purified to actually be one-pointed ekagra. In describing the glories of pure chanting, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Satya Raja Khan, one does not have to undergo initiation or execute the activities required before initiation. One simply has to vibrate the holy name with his lips. Thus, even a man in the lowest class, Jandala, can be delivered. While the truth of the Lord's work is unassailable, Acharyas have emphasized that a neophyte devotee needs a spiritual guide to efficiently unlock the mysteries of Nam Bhajana. And commitment to a guru is firmed up through Diksha. Therefore, while the holy name is not dependent on initiation, it is seen that all but the liberated sadhakas are. Mm. Additionally, the punch card. What is that? Pancha Atrakuti. Pancha Atrakuti. Okay. Pancha system of deity worship is also embraced by Gaudiya Vaishnavas in order to purify devotees for Nam Bhajana. By service to this deity, firm faith is fixed in the Sadhaka's heart. And for deity worship, a devotee must be initiated Brahmana. Thus, he must embrace Diksha. Jiva Goswami gives a crystal clear explanation in his Sandarbha. It is Srimad Bhagavatam's opinion that the process of deity worship is not actually necessary, just as the specific prescriptions of the Pancha, Ktra, and other scriptures need not be followed. The Srimad Bhagavatam enjoins that even without practicing deity worship, one can achieve complete success in human life by any of the other devotional processes, such as simply offering oneself at the Lord's feet for protection. Nonetheless, a Vaishnava following the path of Sri Narada and his successors endeavors to establish a personal relationship with the Lord by receiving the grace of a bona fide spiritual master through initiation. And in this tradition, the devotee is obliged to begin deity worship at the time of initiation. All the deity worship is also not essential. The material conditioning of most candidates for devotional service requires that they engage in this activity. When we consider their bodily and mental conditions, we find that the character of candidates is impure and their minds are agitated. Therefore, to rectify this material conditioning, the great sage Narada and others have at different times, uh, times recommended various kinds of regulations for deity worship okay we'll just 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 pause there um it so happens you know um because we uh regularly teach um in deity worship we teach in mayapur each year 
and a course called a temple worship. Some of you might have attended the one we had here last year. And we're teaching again. And we always quote this paragraph here. Yeah, we we'll, we'll always make this point because sometimes it's misunderstood by hearing about the glories of the holy name that we, we do not need to engage in deity worship. But the Marge put it in quite a succinct way. Yeah, the uh, holy name doesn't need it, but um, but the we do. <laughs> And Shankar Vachabaru, he always brings up that this is <clears throat> coming from Jiva Goswami. This is his conclusion. And that was about the disqualification of practically everyone who's coming to them for Diksha. And this was over 500 years ago. So what to speak of now? <laughs> what to speak of now? So I just thought I'd make those few points, a bit of a deity worship seminar class. But any questions on this? You might meet that. You might come across this misunderstanding. Yeah, Jiva Goswami says here, every, 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 everyone's obliged to begin deity worship at a time of diksha. So diksha here is, is, is referring not to Harinam diksha, but it's referring to second initiation, what, what, what we know as second initiation. That's actually in a strict sense of the term, actually Diksha. Okay. There's Harinam Diksha, which is introduced. What page are we on? It's Kumari Priya's 548. 548. There you go. Hare Krishna. Uh, right? Excuse me, Prabhu. Uh, Please, my yes. question is, do, do one, does one have to take Guru's permission to do the deity worship after Brahmin initiation? Yeah, well, whatever we do in spiritual life and whatever steps we make, and especially worshipping the Lord in his deity form, then we will want the blessings and permission of the Guru. It's not something that we should do independently because it's a, one sense it's a serious commitment. So we should want blessings and we should seek um, permissions either from the Diksha Guru or if that may not be available and you have a good relationship with a Shiksha Guru who, who is guiding you or mentor, then you take Don't we get it? Don't we get, as soon as, you know, we, when we get our Brahmin uh, Gayatri and all that, during the talk, you know, don't we get that, that, okay, from now on, you can do the deity worship? Well, that's generally in regards to the temple. As that's generally in regards to the worship in the Lord in a temple, then it's considered. Yeah, but I think I thought he was asking about home worship. Yeah. Home that's worship different. Then yeah. Then. Yeah. Then you should better to get permission to begin that worship at home or to get guidance from and blessings from senior devotees. Because often, because for instance, you like in your en enthusiasm, which is good. And it's needed in spiritual life. You may overcommit to a really complicated and time-consuming worship, which you won't be able to continue four years down the line when your wife gives birth to the first child. <laughs> you know, so you, they want to think things through and think things over. So you want to get permissions. So yeah, sorry, I thought he was referring to um, home worship, but yeah, generally, but still, it's not. It, it's still, it's not as if. As soon as you get second, you can uh, demand to dress Radha Krishna. <laughs> there's a protocol to go through, and there's, you know, it might not happen straight away, as we know, to cook an offering, but you are duly qualified. No, I, I got my permission, but I was thinking there's quite a few other people here living around, because we got quite a lot of uh, devotees living around Bhaktivedanta Manor. Yeah. I, I was wondering if they all got the permission from their guru to do the Gaunitai worship. Yeah, it's important too. Um, some devotees don't, and they do, and they ask the guru after. Okay, that's better than not asking at all, but best you want to seek blessings before. That's the, I mean, that should be a general principle in our devotional practice, you know? Like a brahmachari is thinking of getting married, should get blessings, or whatever it may be, or Someone's thinking of changing service. Someone's thinking of going to another temple. 
someone is thinking of this responsibility etc we should always want to seek the blessings of the elders of those who got a bit more wisdom from experience you know so or the guru will give you the deities or the guru will give you deities yeah generally that's traditionally what would happen before in in uh, jiva goswami is mentioning that the generally in traditionally speaking when you get diksha which means the um Pantriyatuki mantras, then you will get a mantra specifically for worship of a specific deity, and you may get a specific deity as well. But then, but that's not the general practice today with the Harinam Diksha. The main focus of worship is the Harinam Diksha, but to assist us in chanting the holy name due to our material condition, then worship, then regulated worship of the deity is is very favorable yeah helps to clean things up yeah <laughs> helps to regulate things helps to clean things up helps to set the stage for chanting harinam yeah unless you're harry das taco then no need to worry about anything else okay any other questions on that Mari Priya, is that a hand raised for reading or a hand raised for question? Hare Krishna for reading. Okay, no problem. Any other questions on this, these points? So, boys, we continue. And mm. with Kumari Priya, you can pick up from here. If you have the book, I'm sure you do. You won't put your hand up, I guess, but it's pure devotional service in practice. Um, no, no, is that right? Did we? No, sorry, it's my fault. One page. No, it's from readers. Uh, yeah, page page five four eight. Readers must remember. <laughs> okay, thank you. Readers must remember that the Maha Mantra is not a combination of letters. The absolute truth is Supreme Lord is con mm. uh, concealed behind the curtain of verse 16 names. And that curtain can only be drawn back by a pure devotee who is steeped in the truths and the cultivation of Nama Sankirtana. If a devotee is not pure enough to draw that curtain himself, then he must take shelter of a guru who is willing to share his realization with his sincere follower. The words of mantra combined with the divine blessings of spiritual master constitute the foundations of Nama Vajana. In his advice to the practitioners, Natana Goswami quotes Mantra Nama on the six aspects of mantra cultivation. The verse says, uh, Shall I read translation? Controlling, just read the translation, it's okay. Controlling the mind, striving for purity, observing silence, contemplation, the meaning of a mantra, exhibiting peacefulness and showing eagerness for chanting are the six acts of cultivation with yield mature benefit from japa of the maha mantra. The phrase manaha, manaha samharanam directs the sadhaka to focus his mind on a transcendental sound vibration and withdraw it from all other sense objects. This is a one-pointed attentiveness of which we have spoken at length and will not elaborate on further. External cleanliness and purity, saucha, refers not so much to the qualifications for taking up chanting, but the lifestyle of one engaged in Namsan Bhajana. The reason of a devotee must accept a guru and take Vaishnava initiation from him is to encourage and enforce those practices while simultaneously refraining from an unvaishnava conduct. While absolute silence, mona, is not a Vaishnava practice, avoiding idle talk and speaking only about things related to Krishna are. All kind of unnecessary talk and sound vibration like television, movies, internet and talk of sports are frivolous practices what Rupa Goswami calls Prajalpa. He warns with such idle chat the spoils one's devotional service and a chance to attain the mercy of the name. From this perspective, Mauna is recommended. In his booklet, Nama Bhajana Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Takura emphasizes what repeated remembrance of the meaning of Maha Mantra as explained by Acharyas like Gopala Guru Goswami will remove all the auspiciousness 
on all the auspicious obstacles from a path of bhajana. Vaicharya adds that such meditation will in time invoke the personality of a name before the sadhaka spiritualize. This is mantra ta chintana, meditating on the meaning on a, of a mantra. While the reader is encouraged to look at the many words word-to-word -word explanations of Maha Mantra given by Acharyas, we give a summary here. The name Hari indicates he who frees one of all sin and from the threefold mysteries, or it denates what irres irresistible person who steals the minds of all living entities, including of his own incarnations. In the vocative... Hari is expressed as Hari, which also means Hara or Radha, the feminine aspect of Absolute, who bewilders Krishna's mind to no end. The name Krishna indicates the supreme all-attractive person. The two syllables of Rama drive all sins from a heart and prevent them from ever returning. And Rama also refers to Radha Raman, uh, the lover of Shri Radha. Different sadhakas will be drawn to different explanations of the Maha Mantra. It will be a matter of devotional taste. However, the meaning of a choice will form part of the foundation of a Nam Mabhajana. The word Atyagratva indicates a state in which a devotee is not distracted. This may refer to a secluded place and a time dedicated to quality cultivation, as well as to attentiveness referred to by Manaha Sam Barana. It's closely connected to the word Ekagrata as it contains the same word Agra. Needless to say, all five substages of Smarana Dasha are dependent on both suitable circumstances and proper focus. And finally, Anirveda means no indifference. The meaning no indifference is a warning. No one becomes intimate with the in different person. Affection breeds affections. Similarly, to attain the mercy of holy name, a devotee should chant with loving feeling. If such emotion has not yet manifest, then the practitioner must at least draw the name into his heart by extreme humility and firm devotion. Okay, thank you, Mother. Let's just pause there. Um, there could be a six days seminar on this few paragraphs, just explain there. Um, any questions came from here? It seems Maharaj again is laying out the, the basic foundations before one can really can engage in Nam Bhajan. Describe some things here to control the mind, mm -hmm. etc. Um, Eka Grata, it's meant there's a whole section on that. I think we did read through that. Ekagrata means um, being fixed, um, learning the art of hearing the mantra without the mind going here and there, as it often does. Yeah, so fixed. Learning to meditate. So that's what we're doing. We are learning to meditate, but specifically on the sound, transcendental sound. Yeah, Marge mentions at the beginning that... Um, the Maha Mantra is not a combination of letters. Yeah. So it's something that appears by the grace of Krishna. So Krishna appears by his grace and mercy. That's why sometimes you chant Japa. And it's, again, without some seemingly effort on your own part, it's very, very sweet. That's because Krishna is appearing there. And sometimes he, sometimes he's not there. So then we're just chanting, then we're spitting out, it's like spitting out letters of the alphabet. Because <laughs> Krishna's not there. Anyway, so that's, um, yeah, so controlling the mind, striving for purity. So someone could just say back, what did Marge mention about that, striving for purity? Where did he say that? Lifestyle, he mentioned. Oh, yes. Normal radio. Yeah. <laughs> no, lifestyle. So you have to, we can, 
So in the beginning, we just tell people to chant Hare Krishna. And we may not give these details that's needed for the um for the for the perfection of chanting. But especially for those who have taken initiation and made a serious commitment to uh, chanting the holy name, then chanting the holy name is not just about sitting down with your japa beats. There's a whole lifestyle that, that actually goes behind the proper cultivation. So I'm just mentioning that here. Yeah. It's like an elephant going is dirty and he goes in the water to wash himself. Then he came out and then he's putting mud over him again. Yeah. So we want to keep the act clean, keep our yeah, keep our life regulated as possible in this nutty material world. <laughs> Anything can go wrong. But to keep it as regulated as possible. And as simple as possible, as uncomplicated as possible. Yeah. Then he mentions um, observing silence. What did he say about that? Observing silence. But how can you observe silence when you chant all the time? No, that's a different subject. Go on. Anyone can say what the Maharaj meaning? Not talk prajalpa. Yeah, prajalpa ni magraha. Pujalpa mentions that frivolous. He mentions um, um, un unnecessary talk, sound vibrations like television, movies, internet, talk of sports, so frivolous practices that, that yeah, so Rupa Goswami called internet frivolous practice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Maharaj is just giving a, you know, an obvious co correlation excuse me so that may take that may that sh well hopefully if those who take initiation um these are what it means these adjustments we should make in our life um so perhaps if we find ourselves not being infused about our chanting and we kind of take it as a challenge and it's difficult for us each day then perhaps we're not perhaps our lifestyle is 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 not matching what we're trying to cultivate you know if we're absorbed in mundane topics talks of sports and frivolous practices remember i mean i won't mention names but there was one senior devotee and they was expressing their enthusiasm for football <laughs> and particularly they was vying over which was the best football team and these are senior devotees. I, I didn't think that was such a good example, you know, personally. Going fishing. Sorry? I heard the story about someone who loves to go fishing, very senior devotee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Well, as long as they put the fish back, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, so we want to, there's a, there's a lifestyle that goes with chanting. So that's um, observing, so that's, striving for purity and observing silence uh, contemplating the meaning of the mantra so that's quite a subject there's different what's the basic meaning that we that we enter into to to begin with with the maha mantra listening it listening now, what, what's the meaning that 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 Prabhupada gave as a general as a general um explanation of what the mantra means engage engage me in your service yeah i'm just going to ask us uh, does yeah. everyone know the meaning of the mantra you're chanting every day <laughs> you know I mean? so that's the general meaning please please engage me in your service but then we will see as as devotee develops that that may become kind of what we call fluffed out and becomes and there are different, different explanations are given to the Maha Mantra. So, yeah, but it's one of striving for and asking for and to be engaged in service specifically. My Lord, please engage my mind in your holy name. Once having controlled my mind, this is one explanation I saw, I think, by one of the chairs. Having control of my mind, please keep my mind there. Please do not be made distracted. 
Oh Radha, please let me be attracted to Krishna. Oh Krishna, please let me be attracted to Radha. So there's some more very um, esoterical um, explanations of the Maha Mantra as well, which are in relationship to Krishna's pastimes, according to your qualification. All right. So that's yeah. Exhibiting peacefulness. What did Marge mention about that? He didn't mention. Hmm. Yeah, anyway. Mention peacefulness, showing eagerness for chanting. Yeah, being peaceful, showing eagerness for chanting. And six acts to cultivation that yield mature benefit in Japan. And then to avoid being indifferent. That's nice what Mariah says here, isn't it? No one becomes intimate with an indifferent person. Yeah. So if we're indifferent to the holy name, don't expect much. Yeah. So affection breeds affection. Yeah. So it's good. To also, sometimes I we hear sometimes it does sound like devotees chant like a machine gun. You know, <laughs> like a machine gun. It does sometimes it doesn't sound like there's much feeling at all. It's just like da 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 da. <laughs> so but it, it says there that you, go on, not a moment. But it says you should chant the syllables properly. If you don't chant them properly and you say Krishna or other ways, it's so not that's there as well. We should make sure we're chanting all the syllables. So there's 16 syllables of the Maha Mantra. And they should all they should all be there but sometimes we just may have to remind ourselves or to be to put some affection put some love whatever we may have we can all muster up something put some affection and love into our chanting yeah not just like a machine gun you know because that may be there in the beginning that may be i mean the mind may be so wild and so difficult that sometimes you need to hit it with the machine gun of the Maha Mantra. <laughs> Try and shoot it down. You know, but it's good, especially if we've been chanting a few years and more senior devotees, we should learn to put, put some affection, put some love into the chanting. You know? Yeah. All right. Hare Krishna. Any other? Yeah, and no Ramo, Mother Gaya mentions. Rama. So she's obviously heard people chanting Rama. Yeah, it's good. Also, everyone brings up a good point. Sometimes you might want to ask your friend or ask someone, you know, or you might do an inventory on your chanting to make sure you are chanting properly and you are chanting all the words of the Maha Mantra. Because you'll be surprised how, how bad habits one may get into and not even notice it. You know? Especially if it's been done over a few years, it's very difficult to break that bad habit. So sometimes we want to have a um, an inventory of are we actually chanting every word of the Maha Mantra correctly. Yeah. All right, let's read a bit more, unless there's any more questions or comments on these points. Some good things to meditate upon. Again, that could be a seminar, could be sure a Sachin Andamaraj seminar. <laughs> his points here. Actually, his seminars are based on a lot of these points. You know. Okay, I'll have a read. I can't see any hands. We have mentioned that there are two kinds of sadhakas. Those who cultivate smaran. Yeah, this is a big subject, this one. Those who cultivate smaran and, and those who do not. So cultivate smaran means you're thinking of Krishna. You're thinking of Krishna's lotus feet. You're thinking of Krishna's form. That means to cultivate smaran. And, and those that do not. Whether they do or do not, the sequence of development for both efforts means a progressive meditation in bhajan on Krishna's names, then his form followed by his qualities 
And finally, his pastimes, Nam, Rupa, Guna, Leela. The difference between the two is that the former meditation manifests by effort, in the latter, by the grace of the holy name. And if you really want to hear more about this subject, um, Maharaj, uh, His Holiness Shiva Ram Sai Maharaj, gave an amazing class on Sunday about this exact point. Yeah, I look like you can see it's there, it's recorded, it's about an hour and a half. Marge speaks exclusively on this point. And interesting, he mentioned that you all just okay. If your mind is under he mentioned if your mind is going here and going there, yeah, there's no harm. He said you can meditate upon Krishna if you want. He said the main thing is to hear the mantra, and then naturally it will manifest in a natural way. But Muli Prabhu, this class, where was it actually taken? Uh, Sunday, uh, New Vajdam. It will be, be, um, be on the Shivaram Swami's uh, website. Okay, thank you. It's really wonderful. Can yeah. someone send a link, please? Yeah, I, should, I can send the link. I shall find it after this. So I'll send the link to, Ch to Chandravali. She can send you. It's worth listening. Yeah, so. Okay, there's a question that devotees often ask. Does cultivation mean that a sadhaka must make a systematic effort to go through the sequence of Nam, Rupa, Guna, Lila to finally enter Asta Kalia Lila Smaran? Okay, Panditjis, what's Asta Kalia Lila Smaran? Meditating on the eight uh, different pastimes of Krishna during the Correct, day. yes, that's it. Astakalya Lila Smaran. Or is it enough just to hear the mantra? Okay, here's the question. <laughs> the answer is to relish the nectar of Krishna's pastimes, meditation on the names of the Maha Mantra is enough. There is no obligation to practice a simultaneous meditation on Krishna's form and so on. All right. Some devotees may make a separate effort to meditate on Krishna's form quality and pastimes but such effort is optional and sex and successful only for the experienced. the standard safe and recommended practice is that devotees attentively hear krishna's holy names by the grace of the names the adept sadhaka will naturally ascend the rungs of remembrance there is no requirement for separate effort all the charis have given this as their conclusion Shri Prabhupada himself said. Mm. Okay, let's read these two paragraphs and then if there's any questions on this. The purification of chanting Hari Nama means as soon as you chant the holy name of Krishna, immediately you will see the form of Krishna. You will realize the qualities of Krishna. You will immediately remember the pastimes of Krishna. That is pure chanting of Hare Krishna mantra. In his commentary, Shri Jiva Goswami says that the pure devotee who chants Hare Krishna mantra immediately sees all these manifests, Nam, Rupa, Guna, Leela, Harikara, Vashishta. Simply by chanting the name, you will feel the form of Krishna. Here is Krishna, Nam, Rupa, Guna. So this is pure chanting, okay? Prabhupada, we should take it for granted. Prabhupada is speaking about chanting without offense. This is the result. Simply by chanting the name, you will feel the form of Krishna. Here is Krishna. Nama Rupa Guna. Here are the qualities. Oh, Krishna is so qualified. He's so kind. He's so mag he's so magnanimous. So many qualities you will remember. Nam Rupa Guna Lila. Then oh, his pastimes. Oh, Krishna instructed Arjuna. Krishna played with the cowherd boys. Krishna had very nice talks with, with the gopis, with his mother. You saw that these things will be remembered. That is the perfection of that is the factual perfection of chanting. All right, any questions on that? Yes, can I ask you, Muli Prabhu, does it yes. mean that while we are chanting, this at the end it says like, uh, uh, yeah, with his mother Yashoda, but we are trying to concentrate and chanting the name. So gradually, as, as it says that, we we'll start thinking like that. Am I right? Or yeah, you should look at it like it begins to flower and it begins to manifest. Mm. Yeah. Now, an important thing is here is that 
it's a subtle thing. But when, by the grace of Krishna, these things do manifest, we should be aware that they are manifesting and not try and drive them out of our mind and think, no, I just should hear the mantra, I shouldn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're chanting Hare Krishna. You've been chanting a number of years, and then thoughts naturally and, and, and spontaneously come to your mind about Krishna's form. Mm -hmm. You should recognize it and let it in. Rather than otherwise, you might mistake. No, no, I should just hear the sound of. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, and so you should. We should be aware that these. I mean, those who are chanting. A lot of you've been chanting many years. You know, so you will get. You know, these things will come. Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastime. Now, also be understood as well that what comes to mind generally is going to be what you've read or what you've heard about as well. So you have to do your background work. You have to, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. But so you want to incline to, you know, you're inclined, you should know about Krishna's pastimes, you should know about Krishna's form, you should read about Krishna's pastimes. And then when that, then by the grace of Krishna, then these things will kind of, hopefully will come to mind. And hopefully it will be at some point where we're spoiled for choice, choice where, where we don't know what to, we don't know where to go. <laughs> and that's what Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks about, where the holy name takes you. And that's more advanced chanting, which we're trying to come to. But the main point here is that everything, there's no need to get to, it, it will come. But we should have to recognize it when it comes and meditate on Krishna. Yes. Name, form, yeah, name, form, pastimes, name, form, quality, pastimes, etc. And so Papa is speaking here about, obviously speaking about pure chanting here. He's saying, oh, like, yeah, he's just saying, oh, this is so nice, Krishna, oh, so nice. Krishna's playing with his cows, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Oh, he's talking with the gopis, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Yeah, these things will be remembered. Yeah. Like you said, at present we chant, but because we've heard of so many pastimes, that kind of things come in, like pictures of the pastimes. Come yeah, in, you know? that's it. But we should keep a balance that, you know, we should make sure something, if you try artificially to induce the pastimes, then it's, 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 it's difficult. It's like trying to straighten a dog's tail. You're trying to do it, but your mind goes here, your mind goes there. And then you're not chanting the mantra properly. Because <laughs> it's artificial, you know, so we should look out, yeah, trying to artificially. It's a it's a great art, and to to be truthful, I'm still trying to work it out myself. So I find it that's why I found Maharaj's class on this subject on Sunday very interesting. The way he speaks and explains about this stage, he explains about this this stage or exactly what we just read. Those two paragraphs is an hour and a half class that he gives. It's amazing what he says about the appearance of Krishna in the form of the mantra, you know. All right. <clears throat> All right, and um that's six fifty-nine. Now next week, um, I'll be on route. I'll be I'll be flying over the, the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. heading towards New York. I've just there for two and a half weeks. Um, so next uh Monday we won't have a reading but i'm going to see how things are there and hopefully i can do something on tuesday and wednesday and thursday but i shall keep you informed about that i really like these readings and discussions and so i'm going to try to make it happen in new york what about the time difference then yeah well i'm just going to work it out um i try and keep it this because i i will adjust my time and i keep it at your time and I'll try and adjust, see if I think six hours different, no? New York, six yeah, hours. Yeah, difference. Anyway, yeah. going to play it by year. I really want to continue, and I'm going to try and continue. But okay. we shall keep you updated, okay? Okay, Frank, everyone, please join us tomorrow. For those who are into a, a Bhagavad Gita reading, please join us. We really need the core team there at this preaching opportunity. So please join us tomorrow if you can for Bhagavad Gita. So thank you everyone for listening in and taking part in the discussion.
I hope what we read today is going to infuse your japa tomorrow morning or even today. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna